Hey, Randy Hunter here from BeginningSax.com, and I just want to give you a little information about my lesson series called Confirmation Bop Concepts. Now, the tune Confirmation by Charlie Parker represents one of the most difficult bop tunes of, you know, in the bop repertoire. So, um, you know, it's a, it's a very challenging tune, but what I wanted to do is break the soloing down to a level for where you can, you know, have a good entry point and learn how to actually get into some fairly advanced concepts pretty quickly. Now, as with all of my lessons, we don't really focus on learning the melody. You know, um, you can learn the melody in either the Hal Leonard's Real Book or you could get the Charlie Parker Omni Book and learn the melody there if you want to. But you know, the thing is, with this set of changes, with these exercises, these really apply to your improvisation on many, many tunes. You know, anything from rhythm changes to um, to tunes that just have some quick two fives. You know, some two beat two fives included, and uh, certainly tunes that have three six two five progressions in them a lot of tunes have three six two five turnarounds in them so any way you look at it learning to improvise on this uh on this set of changes is going to be really beneficial to your overall ability to play you know some advanced sounds on um on many different tunes now i've got the first three parts of this series together and it starts out very basic you know or I say very basic we you know not not at the beginning of improvisation so if you're looking for beginning stuff you might want to go to my beginning improvisation series but you know we start out with a set called uh, or with a lesson called the guide tone connection where we learn some basic guide tone movements and I've got some exercises for you and I'm not going to tell you too much right now because I'm going to give you some samples that you can look at in just a moment. Part two is called inversions and displacements you know so you've heard lines um, that you hear the skip in the line that's an inversion or, or that's a displacement so we'll, we'll, anyway like I said I don't want to get too deep into any of this right now because I'm going to give you some samples here to check out in just a moment and part three in this set is called the enclosure equation where we learn about how enclosures can work with these lines you know so um you learn some pretty neat sounds and I think I've organized them in a good progressive manner so that you're not you know swamped with an abundance of material without any way of really knowing how to put it together so you know it's really it's really progressively organized and I think pretty well I spent a lot of time um, starting on this series with um, with some private students who were studying some transcriptions of folks playing confirmation and um, I won't even talk about too much about that right now you know I, I believe I mentioned some of those things in the lesson series as we go by now this series has been on my subscription site, randyhunterjazz.vhx.tv, for a while. So if you're a subscriber, you may have already worked through that set. And in fact, I've got part four on the site there. So if you're if you're interested in staying up on my most recent creations and things as they develop, you might consider uh, subscribing. And of course, you have access to everything. But remember, you can always purchase individual lessons or lesson sets at beginningsax.com and always feel free to contact me immediately randy at randyhunterjazz.com you can always drop me a note and i'm happy to get back with you you know regarding any of your questions about which lessons might be appropriate for you or if you're working on some of the lessons i'm always happy to um uh, you know provide good customer support there so i like to make sure that folks know what they're doing and they're happy with what's going on okay so check out some of these samples So I've called part one in our series the Guide Tone Connection because I want to take you through a series of exercises to help you learn how the guide tones, and in many cases that's the thirds and sevens, connect the chord changes. Now I'll elaborate on the guide tones and our objectives as far as that is concerned in a few minutes, but first I wanted to go ahead and take a moment and talk you through the chord progression because I think it's important that you understand your chord progression to uh, T tunes or exercises, whatever it is you're working on, I think it's important that you understand the chord progression before you get too involved in working on playing things. You know, uh, yeah. 
tones when other tones serve as guide tones as well. Most notably on dominant chords, the flat nine can serve as a guide tone. Now this um, can occur if whether the guide tone or whether the flat nine is actually in the, the dominant chord or not. So, you know, on our first dominant chord, the B7 flat nine, we have a flat nine in it. On the A7 flat nine, or on the A7 chord, I should say, there's no flat nine noted in the chord symbol, but we can still use the guide tone or the flat nine as a guide tone to connect that chord with the following chord. Now, you can look at our example here and you'll see that I've started with the F sharp half diminished chord and I'm showing the seven, that's the E. Now I'm gonna just take it for granted that you know your, your arpeggio tones, one, three, fives, and sevens. If you don't, you may have a little homework to do before you're a ready. A little better. Now, we starting, we're starting with the E on the F sharp half diminished chord. That's the seven. Some of the guide tone connections I really like to make are the connections between the seven on the minor chord. Remember, F sharp half diminished is the minor chord. It's our two chord in this particular two five. Between the seven and the third on the dominant chord, you can see that I've got the E written and right next to it on the B7 flat nine chord, I have the D sharp. So we've got the seven to the three. So if I played an arpeggio on the F sharp half diminished, one, three, five, seven, it goes directly to that D sharp. What a neat sound. So we'll get into the exercise in a moment, but let's continue to look ahead at the guide tones. Now on the on beat four on on the B7 flat nine chord, I have the A and the C written. That's the seven and the flat nine. So the seven on the um, on the dominant chord there connects to the third of the next chord, our minor chord, our E minor chord. So A is a good connector going to that G. Pretty neat sound. I mean, it's not a half step. A lot of times we think of guide tones as moving in half steps. But when we have a dominant chord that's five of an upcoming minor chord, the uh, seven moves a whole step to the three on the minor chord. So in other words, it is. Part two of our confirmation bop series, we're going to work at getting a little bit more of a bop sound to your lines. You know, I know in part one we really focused on establishing those seven to three and the flat nine related guide tone connections. We'll continue to use those. We'll continue to base our lines largely around those connections, but we'll get into some of the other components of bop, which include inversions and displacements. I'll talk about those in a moment. Now, now a displacement is when you alter the natural course of a line to either keep it within the natural register of the instrument or make the line more interesting. For example, I might play a 2-5 on F sharp minor 7 flat 5 to B7 flat 9 like this. So there I'm playing a straight descending line. Well, maybe I want to put a displacement in there to make that line a little more interesting. If I do it down an octave without the displacement. 
still pretty interesting, but we almost get like double the bang for our buck when we use these um, these displacements. So we've got you know the same group of tones, the same sequence, the same order of tones, but with the displacement, we get really kind of a really pretty interesting line with an additional angle in it. Now when I say angle, I mean the, the jump. So now your task is to begin assembling lines over these two fives in our chord progression, the lines that, lines that are based on the inversions, the displacements, and the tone sequences that we've learned and exercised to this point. Now, you'll be able to start creating some really pretty good sounding bop lines, especially if you use a little bit of uh, rhythmic variation, but keep in mind that we've got a lot of bop language left to cover. So, you know, we're really just laying the foundation. I mean, after all, we're only working with the ones, threes, fives, sevens, and on the dominant chords, the flat nines. So a lot of language left to learn. But I think it makes sense to assemble it in this step-by-step -step manner that we're doing. And, you know, I like to think of the language or this this material, these inversions, all the things that we're covering, kind of like a vocabulary list. So if you remember like when you were in uh, a kid in grade school, the teacher would give you a vocabulary list and then one of your assignments might be to assemble sentences based on words in the vocabulary list. Well, this is our musical vocabulary list. So what I've done is I've just written a brief eight bar passage over the first eight bars of our chord progression to confirmation that'll give you just kind of a glimpse into some of the lines, some of the types of lines that you can practice at creating using these particular components. So take a listen to this uh, to this little this little passage. I mean, it's brief. I'm not even going to use it with a play along track. Um, and I think your practice at first probably should be without the play along track, but take a listen. So you were just listening to me practice over a chorus to our chord progression to the tune confirmation. Now in that in that passage or in that practice round on the chord progression, I was really working to include some new concepts that we'll talk about in a moment. But um, first, let me mention that I wanted to reinforce things that we've already covered, you know, triads, connecting tones, guide tone connections, um, arpeggios with guide tone connections, inversions, displacements, all of the things that we've worked at to this point, because really what we're doing is we're um, developing a stepping stone approach to practicing um, practicing tunes with bop concepts. So whether you're practicing confirmation or other tunes, you could um, really kind of layer your practice in the way that we're approaching this one. You know? So we have two note enclosures. We could go the other way. We could do a half step below followed by a half step above. I think what I played a moment ago to start my chorus with was and then I believe I did a three note enclosure. Now a three note enclosure is a little more complex because it'll include a half step above, in this case a half step above, and a chromatic approach beginning a whole step below a target tone. Now the one I, the one I started that passage with a moment ago um, enclosed the third of the chord, the B. So I started a half step above, went a whole step below the chord tone, below the B, and chromatically approached it. 
So I think I, if I recall correctly, I started that chorus with I may have followed that by an enclosure of the F sharp on the F sharp half diminished chord. And hopefully that's what I played. I think that was one of the things I was practicing because, like I said, I practiced, um, I practiced this with these specific parameters before I started putting this lesson together because I wanted to practice what I'm showing you guys. So as your, um, as your skills go or grow, you'll be able to put enclosures in various places throughout the chords and not even always targeting downbeats. Sometimes enclosures will target upbeats. It'll be like an offset. Um, enclosure targeting a syncopated portion of the beat. But anyway, let's start with uh, with just one up, one down enclosures that in target the roots. Now, that might work sort of like this. And one, two, three. Two, three. 